and you're up and you're down and you're over and out, come listen to your friend, Stephen Brown, this is the show. <laughs> and now, your host for this evening, Stephen Brown. Thank you for that intro, John Lennon. Really appreciate it. Um, welcome to Breaking It Down with Brown, guys. I'm your host, Stephen Brown. This is the internet talk show where we break down um, all kinds of pop culture news, whatever I want to talk about personally. And this is the Halloween special. I know it's been about a month since the last time I put a video up. Things have been busy, but I'm so excited to be back here in front of the camera and recording. Nearly a month ago, September 27th, Ryan Reynolds dropped um, a teaser video for Deadpool 3 on his Twitter showing off that um, Hugh Jackman is going to be playing Wolverine again and be in Deadpool 3, which um, is, um, oh, you see me in my Wolverine costume. That is amazing news. I'm super excited. I'm so glad to see Hugh Jackman back as Wolverine. The only problems and questions I have is what is the longevity of this? I mean, he's older and a lot of actors don't like to be tied down to roles like this for so long, especially Hugh Jackman. You know, he wants to go be on Broadway and singing and dancing like a goddamn monkey. Um... Now, if he is playing Wolverine, that's great, but does that mean there won't be a Wolverine in the MCU moving forward and the, the, the new X-Men films that are going to happen eventually? Um, is it going to be, you know, maybe X-23 taking the mantle of Wolverine, which I'm fine with, actually, especially if they use um, Daphne Keene, who played Laura in um, in uh, Logan. She was very good, and she's uh, getting older now. She's I think she's like 16, 17, so she could definitely fill in for that role. Um, I just want to see more Wolverine as one of my favorite superheroes. I don't want to... I don't want him to be left out of the discussion, you know what I mean? Now, today we'll be lighting a candle for G4, which unfortunately has officially shut down. Um, it looks like all the haters on the internet got what they wanted. Um, now, I've made a, a solo video specifically talking about um, the Frost drama, so I won't be going into it here on this episode today. Um, but just honestly... Um, it is sad all those people lost their jobs and they were very talented. And, um, you know, in this house, we watch G4 a lot. Um, and it was, it, I look forward to every attack of the show. I look forward to every feedback. I look forward to every uh, vibe check, every um, uh, fresh ink with Cass and G. Um, and it's just, it's just so sad to see it go. And I hope that I can continue to see these creators in their own ways, doing whatever they're moving forward with. But it's sad that they're not all together under the G4 banner working on that. Amaranth's husband, um, which yes, she has a husband, was out at it. You've seen the videos. There's been millions of them. Um, husband uh, was abusing her um, emotionally and um, somewhat physically, it looks like. Uh, and now I, I don't have to rehash the situation. You've seen a million videos on this because I know I'm late to the party. Um, but what I want to bring up is the question of it's very uh, troubling that they fired um, a cameraman who was a friend of Amaranth supposedly for seven to eight years. And um, people are saying, well, why didn't he come out with the story and whatever, because he was saying he stands with her in solidarity and stuff, and everyone's saying, why didn't this man um, say something about the abuse? And it's because it's if the, that man was running the show, that's his job. And abusers are going to eliminate people from the lives of the person they're abusing and controlling so that they can't affect you know, their control over that person. So, of course, the guy um, must be the husband, has, has fired this cameraman now. Um, and the reason being, um, they, they uh, Amaranth posted that that um, they sat down, uh, her and her husband, and 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 figured out the whole situation. That everything's fine now, everything's resolved, and no one in the internet has to worry about him being abusive or anything anymore. And this all happened within 48 hours of her live stream of her breaking down and and, and talking about everything to then just saying she's fine. Um, and clearly she's not fine. Clearly there's abuse at play. Clearly this man has cut you know this other man out of her life and is going to cut out more people and keep controlling her and using her as a cash cow. It's just very obvious. But there's nothing we can do um, except sit back and 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 watch what happens. Honestly, YouTuber Boy in a Band has been um, outed on the internet recently for abusing young women um, and abusing his celebrity to sleep with women. And I took to Twitter to ask the hard hitting questions. In other news, um, Rings of Power's ratings continue to drop, and now with season one being over, Amazon um, is looking to completely retool the show, fire everyone, and start from the ground up. Um, not the actors, I think, but showrunners, writers, everything, they're completely uh, redoing it. And I mean, who could have seen that show, you know, crashing? Who could have seen that coming, that that show would not do well? It's crazy. The Disney Plus series um, Iron Wars, focusing on War Machine, um, is going to be transitioned into a movie instead of a series, which I personally am happy about. I hate TV. I'm not going to lie. I don't like watching serious shows on repeat like that. I'd rather all these Disney plus Marvel shows and Star Wars stuff be movies. 
that's just me personally. I like lighter, funner things for TV. Um, now, um, that being said, if we could just replace Don Cheadle with, with someone who isn't a little bitch, then the War Machine uh, movie would really be good. Peacock released um, a new documentary about the big, funny, purple dinosaur, Barney, called I Love You, You Hate Me. And though I haven't watched it yet, I just gotta say, I always knew that purple dinosaur was fucking them kids. This next story personally affected me and uh, upset me, I'm not gonna lie. I'm gonna try to keep my rage down. I almost recorded a solo video the day it happened just to complain about it. Uh, but Overwatch 2 launched to um, no success. Uh, and if you waited three hours in the queue line to play, which said 40 thousand people ahead of you you got to a screen where you could log in and sign up and you had to add a phone number fine you add the phone number and if you don't have the right phone service they deny entry and because me a peasant uses a, a, a cheap cricket wireless phone i'm not allowed to play a free-to-play game and when i took to the internet to see if i was the only person or if there's something wrong here or if there's a glitch if, you know there's no way this could be a thing there were droves of people on Reddit and Twitter in threads complaining about the same issue. And then you had other people who were not as less fortunate as us saying, well, why don't you just get a better phone? Uh, or you shouldn't be playing a Blizzard game if you're poor. And I have nothing to say, but what a complete blunder. Um, now, they have changed this. They have rectified this and fixed it so that you don't need... Um, I actually don't know if it's specifically... Uh, they changed what phone plans are available on that, or if they took the phone number off, I'm not sure, because I ended up signing up under my girlfriend's phone number. Um, thank God for that, so I could play. Um, but at least they fixed something. But at the same time, how ridiculously stupid to add something like that to a free service like that, or to a video game. Why Gatewall? I mean, of course, they want money, I guess. I don't even know how that equates to the phone stuff. And I know people say that it's for um, competitive play, so that you cannot create multiple competitive accounts and you need to have phone lines for it. And people are so worried about Smurf accounts and all this kind of stuff. But competitive play is competitive play. Whenever I see someone complain about Smurf accounts, um, if you're using a Smurf account so you can go play against less uh, capable players, then you just suck. You just suck at the game. And you don't actually enjoy the game if you have to go play against people who are worse than you so you can feel like you're winning. Because you don't need to do the competitive queue. You can do the normal play queue where you put against anybody. But no, you want to be in competitive, but still and just be winning games, I guess, essentially. You're just a sore loser. You shouldn't be playing competitive anyways. Finally, Retribution. Senpai noticed me. Kasim posted on Twitter about someone scamming as him and said that he wouldn't respond to people um, if you're his fan or whatever. So don't expect to have a message from him if you're getting messaged by him. It's a scam. And I responded, I can confirm. I do a weekly segment on my on my video series here where I message Kasim G until he messages me back. And he responded to that tweet. So he noticed me. Dear Kasim, I know it's been a while since I've messaged you, but I'm sorry to hear about G4TV. I'll be supporting you in all your future endeavors. Up next is Key Issues, where I tell you about whatever comics I've read lately that I think are worth buying and adding to your collection. Recently, I've been reading some Flash, and I have for you um, the Flash 2016 run from Rebirth on um, number 63. It depicts the Flash learning about um, the new uh, forces, the uh, other than the Speed Force, the Sage Force, um, uh, the, the Power Force, and the Still Force. Um, it directly ties into Heroes in Crisis, which I'm not the biggest fan of Heroes in Crisis, but it is a big event, so you have to have it for your collection anyways, and this is a good single issue to tie in with that. Alongside Flash uh, number 63 is uh, the Flash Annual number 2. Um, this one, uh, it, it focuses on the aftermath of, of uh, spoilers, Wally's death um, in Heroes in Crisis. This happened back in like 2018, so it's really not a spoiler if you don't know what's going on already. Um, and Bart Allen um, emerges from the Speed Force. He's back in continuity uh, since the first time, since I think last we saw him was New 52 Teen Titans, I believe it was that version of him. Um, it could be wrong, it was Bart Allen or the other... Um, Bart, someone, there's another, there's so many of them, I can't remember, um, and, uh, uh, he's back for the Wonder Comics imprint, which I'm in 2018, I'm reading chronologically everything DC and Marvel, so I haven't been to Wonder Comics and read the new, uh, Young Justice comics and stuff like that, but it's exciting, and I'm excited to see where this goes in the future with the Flash franchise. Up next is, uh, Letterbox Diary, where I, uh, give you the reviews of the movies that I've watched since the last episode. Now, since the last episode, has it's been almost a month, um, I've seen 14 movies, we don't, I don't have the time now with my schedule to edit me talking about 14 movies for this video. Um, so I just picked the five Halloween or horror-based movies that I watched in the last month for the Halloween special. So let's jump into those. 
Up first is um, Sleepy Hollow by Tim Burton, a 10 out of 10. Um, now, it's, this movie has made me rethink uh, my my rating system. I originally never wanted to give anything in any any video game, movie, comic, anything a 10 out of 10 because a 10 out of 10 should be unattainable and a 1 out of 10 should be unattainable. They should be the, the end of the scales. But I, I decided, you know what? This movie is very... Uh, I give it a 5 out of 5 on Letterboxd. Or I don't like 5 star ratings. I like out of 10. Um, but this movie is exactly what it's supposed to be. It's exactly telling the story it wants to. It does everything perfectly the way it wants to. It's a beautiful world. It's... I didn't want to leave the world in it. It's just Tim Burton's aesthetic is to a 10 here. It's the best. I, I think this is my favorite movie by him. It's just amazing to me. Um, I had I had such a good time with it. And um, now I had seen it when I was a kid, but I didn't remember anything about it really. But with the mystery afoot, um, the mystery is engrossing. And I was I was wondering what was going to happen. And I wanted to see what was going to happen next. And I was not really expecting things to happen the way they did. And I was caught off guard with stuff. And it was very exciting to me. Um, I really enjoyed it. Um, don't know about reviewing how it's going to be on a second watch, but I just love the world and everything. It gives me very Innistrad, Magic the Gathering vibes. Very cool. I love it so much. Go check it out, please. It's a modern classics collection. Obviously, you got to be on my list on Letterboxd. Up next is um, Werewolf by Night. I give this a 7 out of 10. This was a, a very surprising film. Uh, it's a it's a special or something. It's like a 50 minutes. It's like a short film. It's still I'd say it's still like a movie. Um, it was really fun. Um, I like the visuals, the black and white, and when it transitions to color at the end, there's like this one scene, one moment where it focuses on Elsa Bloodstone and it's turning to color and that and the music and so that that was one of those moments that was very powerful to me, very moving and I like really enjoyed it. it. Was right up my alley that aesthetic right there at the moment and they add Man Thing um, into the into the show into the movie whatever. Um, which is great to see him, and he was done well. The characters are done well. I enjoyed all the characters. It was very fun, very light, and I don't know if I would ever watch it again. You know what I mean? But it was a very fun uh, little time to have, and I'm just excited to see something different by Marvel. Next is uh, Hubie Halloween. This is I've seen this before, but I watched it again with the girlfriend. Um, she had never seen it before, and this is a um, a guilty pleasure. I give it a six out of ten. It's nothing amazing. It's fine. Um, but it's, I'm putting on the Modern Classics collection because it is an Adam Sandler movie and it is an Adam Sandler movie. It's, it's fun. Um, you know what you're getting. And as those movies go on, they get dumber and dumber for sure. But it was just a great time. And it, and, and it was, um, it's definitely very comfy and, and a good little family fun to have around Halloween. So if you haven't seen it, go check it out. It's on Netflix. I think I could probably talk about this movie for like an hour, but I'm going to try my best to get through it quickly. Um, up next, it's Halloween Ends, which I give a four out of ten. Um, there's a lot of things to be said about this film. Um, it's the, the opening scene in the theater got me going. I was so ready. I was like, oh, cool. This is dope. Okay. Because I know people didn't like the last one, Halloween Kills. This movie actually made me like Halloween Kills more because um, that one was at least nonstop, like, fun. Like, people were getting messed up and that. There was cool kills and stuff. And that's why you go see these movies. You know what I mean? And the movie starts on, on, on a good foot and just... Every five minutes, me and my girlfriend were looking at each other in the theater, like, what the hell is happening? What is going on? It just deteriorates and just keeps getting worse and worse. And they try to go for this, spoilers, they try to go for this weird legacy thing and try to make this kid the next Michael Myers. And they're doing, like, some weird, like, supernatural stuff. And the worst, and, and if that, if you're going to do that, fine, do that. But they don't even go for it. They, they reel it back at the end and just have Michael Myers come in the last second and he gets killed and stuff, and it was just, there was a lot of potential there, and um, even if they're going to do the stupid thing, like the legacy thing and the whole evil thing, that's fine, you want to do the supernatural thing, I'm fine with that, but at least do it, at least go for it, they like, just, they just like, clearly didn't know what they wanted to do or what they were doing, I have no clue, I mean, actually, you know what, they could, be, how these movies work, they could bring that kid back in the next one somehow, they'll find a, a reason, um, even though he dies. Um, the only thing good about this film I can say is that it, it was beautiful. It was shot very well. It looks really pretty. I like the style of the filming. That's it. Now, um, our last movie I watched um, last night, uh, Bodies, Bodies, Bodies. Um, and having, you know, by right out the gate, so I give it a 5 out of 10. It's average. It's like a normal, it's like a fine normal film. Um, for like a one-time watch, I probably wouldn't ever watch it again. Right out the gate, um, uh, at first, I didn't like it. At the like, I mean, after I finished it, but now having some time to think about it, I get where it's coming from. It's it's a satire on Gen Z, um, which I, I would say sure done pretty well. Um, 
the I forget the one actress's name, Rachel. I think it's Rachel Sennett. Um, she was very funny in it. Um, everyone else, not great. And um, Pete Davidson was pretty bad in it too. Um, but at the end, the the end of the movie, spoilers, um, being that there was no killer the entire time. But Pete Davidson had accidentally committed, actually killed himself in an accident. He wasn't committed suicide. He accidentally slit his throat and died. Um, and so they all thought he was murdered, and they all start accusing each other of being murderers and killing each other and stuff like that. And and uh, it's it, it it that's funny, and I appreciate that. I appreciate what it is. But at the same time, I don't like hanging out with these characters. I don't like watching them for an hour and a half and being a part of the world that it is. And so it's good for like a one time, like one time watch, but I don't think I could ever watch it again. Really quick, we're going to do Stevie's Rec Room, where I just tell you what I've been up to lately, what I think is cool, what you should be doing, what you should be playing, what you should be watching. Um, first, I'm going to be talking about Magic the Gathering. Um, I've been playing Magic the Gathering since I was 15, 14, 15, something like that, and I used to play in a comic shop every Friday, um, and then um, transitioned to now that Arena is a thing, I play MTG Arena, but lately I've been playing every day, I've been doing super good, I've been winning the limited tournaments and stuff, and winning the money and stuff like that, and I'm trying to like low-key go a little pro on there and see if I can get into the qualifier tournaments and stuff, um, because there's a cool pro Jared video. You gotta look up pro Jared got into a pro tournament for MTG Arena. And I'm like, you know what? If he did, and he explains it was just kind of by accident. Like they just kind of asked him because they didn't have enough players and he was in the Mythic rank or whatever. And I'm in Dyna Diamond, which is right underneath Mythic or whatever. Like right underneath Mythic. So I'm one step away from being in the top tier. So uh, I've just been doing that lately, just with my free time. Um, I'm playing that a lot. And uh, just saying, hey, if you're an old Magic player, if you never played Magic before, just go check it out again. The Brothers War is coming out, the new set, and I've been listening to the audiobooks while I um, deliver food as my job. Um, and I'm just in really engrossed in Magic the Gathering right now, again, and it just feels good. It feels like reliving my childhood, you know what I mean? So go, go check it out. Go hang out with it. Go play some games. MTG Arena, free to play. My only other recommendation um, for this episode is going to be WWE. Um, I used to watch a lot of wrestling as a kid, then, you know, grew out of it, thought it was dumb for a long time. And then I came back to it recently and just started watching again weekly as it comes out. And it's just fun. It's just good fun. I picked up WWE 2K22, which is, um, they kind of retooled the games and made them good again, like the old ones were. Now it's like actually fun to play. And you have all the online downloadable custom characters people make. You can play with Goku, Batman, all these kind of stuff. And it's just fun. And I'm planning on doing a new... YouTube series, a uh, gaming uh, series on that, where I have my own wrestling show. I'm going to do some characters, some voices and stuff, and uh, and have some fun matches on there. So you can check that out. Thank you guys so much for watching this Halloween special. Um, I know it's been a long time since, since I made a video. If you like this, please like and subscribe. Please come back and watch sometime. Here's all my socials here. And Shrek, is that you? Uh, I'm a huge fan, man. What, what are you doing in my room? No, dude, I'm, I'm She-Hulk. Uh, oh, shit, word? Okay. Um, so, my bad. I didn't mean any offense by that, but what are you doing in my room, Stebra? You can't end the show yet. You didn't even talk about my finale? I mean, I'm, I'm just the talent. I, like, I don't write the script. I just, you know, record and act it out. What do you want me to do about it? Well, why don't you just do what I did and talk to the writer and have him make the show better? I mean, okay, I'll, I'll give it a try. I mean, we're here, right? Um, hey, uh, Steven, uh, are you in there? Uh, I'm being kind of held hostage by She-Hulk here until we talk about her fucking show. Do you think you could give your thoughts on that? Fine, if I really have to talk about it. Honestly, She-Hulk's not a bad show. Me and my girlfriend enjoyed it. It's just that... Um, it was written very poorly. They clearly didn't know what they were doing. Yes, it is misandrous, the opposite of misogyny. It's definitely anti-men. But it's fine. It's funny. Um, but they really missed the mark with the end. That finale was bullshit, and it was, wasn't was funny. It was just they ran out of ideas, and they thought that would break the internet and save their asses. All right, respect, man. Like, are you okay with that? Are we good here? Yeah, okay. I guess that works for me. You want to hook up? Ew, no, what the hell? You're just me and face paint, you realize that? Like, why does she all gotta hook up with everybody, dude? <laughs> Men bad! Men bad!
Vamos agora quem é o meu aposentadoria. 